dumb vibes is here to entertain you. Hey Mzansi, you're welcome to the channel. First off, forgive my tone. For the information I'm about to detail out to each and every one of you is beyond the term emotional, all centered around the South African rapper aka. His last request that didn't finally come to light has been spoken about, revealed and detailed in full by Kanyad Langa. Please, if you are new here, do well to share this video to the ends of the world. Today is going to be a little different. So, if you can read, take your time and read efficiently. If you can listen to me and understand, if you can comprehend me, do well to do so efficiently. Kayad Langa went on to post on his Twitter incited conversations he had with AKA and these conversations went as thus. I have been debating with myself for over a week now whether to share this or not, even though the Forbes family said we should share stories about Kiernan. On the evening of the 11th of February last year, we ran into each other at Song in Cape Town. He said he had been meaning to talk to me and was glad we ran into each other. He said he wanted me to write a book about his life. Anything can happen, of course. I got a little worried when he said that because my mind wandered because of how I lost my brother. I told him I didn't have the time. I am not a ghost writer. Besides, I don't write about other people's lives. I only write about mine because I find it easier. No, I am not asking you to be a ghost writer. Your name will be as prominent as mine. He tried to convince me, but I was adamant. Eventually, he said, okay, that's fine. Maybe you can suggest some names. We agreed and started talking about other things, and I joined another group of friends. In the early hours of the 12th of February last year, we moved to Coco, another club in Cape Town. Our sections were close to each other. And he called me over to give me a shot of his pineapple flavored Ciroc vodka. As we toasted, he said, F that. I don't want someone else writing my book. If you can't write it, I don't want anyone else writing it. I laughed. I am serious, he said. It's time consuming and returns Aaron's grades, I replied. Besides, I am really in a busy period of my life, and I will never do it justice. No one can write your story better than you can, Kiernan. You are a great storyteller. You write hip-hop. There is nothing stopping you from writing it yourself. I told him I would also hear him speak on stage at Elaris. He will be able to write a great story about his life, I told him. We were screaming into each other's ears, competing with the loud music in the club. He gave me the classic Kiernan rebuttal. So you were saying I must write it because I write music? You write books, right? Can you write hip-hop? I smiled because I saw what he done. Exactly, that's why you must write it, he said. Honestly, bro, I just can't. I don't have the time nor expertise to write about someone else, I said. Besides, why would you want me to write it? Bro, I respect you and I want you to do it. You have credibility and you know how to write. I wouldn't be asking you if I didn't mean it. And I am not asking you because I am at the club drinking. In fact, I will call you in the middle of the day so that you realize I am serious, he said. Your name will be as big as mine on the cover. It will be a proper bestseller, I'm sure of it, he said. What would your book be about? I suggest that you plan what it will be about first. I will maybe walk you through the process, I said, still trying to get him to agree to do the writing himself. 
I want it to cover colored identity. I am the first colored hip hop crossover artist. I am accepted by the black, colored, and white communities in SA. I want to cover the fact that I went to St. John's. Not many people know about that, he said. Do you know the title of the book yet? I asked. He looked at me and said, Give me a moment. He sat thinking for what seemed like two minutes with the loud music blurring inside Coco. He turned to me and said, I got it. Infamous, he said. Infamous? I repeated back to him. Yes, in will be in brackets, as in inside fame, because I live in fame and everything I do is in it, Kiernan said. Infamous! That was the title. I loved it and the double meaning and was equally impressed by how quickly he came up with it and the rationale he gave to me. I am intrigued especially because of the various subject matters you said you will want covered. I am not saying I will do it. I honestly have a lot on my plate and can't do it, I said. It's all good. Take your time and think about it. We danced, had a few drinks, and the night ended. Just 11 days later, Ricky Rick passed on. Two weeks after his passing, Kenan called me at 11 in the first week of March. I told you I would call you in the daytime so you wouldn't think I was saying what I said because we had a few drinks. I really meant it especially now with the passing of Ricky. The call was a few days before the two-year anniversary of the passing of my own brother, so I felt a pang of pain when he mentioned Ricky Rick. My brother had also died by his own hand. I said, I'll think about it and will consult a few people to see what they think. If I did it like you, I'll only do it I talk you. But Kiernan, if I do this, you have to be serious. You know yourself. You're temperamental. We'll have to make arrangements. Every time you're down in Cape Town, you should hit me up and we will record your story. I will ask you questions and you will have to answer honestly. I will have to have it on tape so that when I have time, I can start transcribing if I decide to, I said. I promise I will always be there and give you time. This is important. I am just glad you have moved from saying no to saying you will think about it and are considering it. I told him I was in the process of writing my own book and will only get to his after if I felt comfortable agreeing to write his. He said he got it. At the end of last year, we were once again at adjacent tables at the Nostra in Brianston. We talked about the book and said we would get serious about it this year. I will be done with the book in April of 2023. I really thought there was time, but time does not belong to us. This is actually one thing that has broken me ever since all the tributes for AKA started. I didn't see this coming. Even only if you've watched right up to this end or you've read right up to this end, then you can bear with me that there is something real deep. He had a strong feeling within him. Everything was felt, but he didn't just know how to express it. Didn't know, like he didn't understand what was going on. I pray, aka so rest in peace. And may his family accept our wholehearted condolences. We will never get exhausted telling them to accept our condolences. The Megacy is doing everything possible in order to track the culprit who committed such an act. The authorities are out there doing their very most to track those who committed such an act. AKA wasn't your regular celebrity. AKA was iconic. AKA was a kind person. He was a lovable person. AKA was a family man, a father, a son, a boyfriend. 
I just pray that the good heavens accept him above. May he stay safe wheresoever he is. May he find peace. May he find happiness. May he find joy. You all tell me in the comment section what you think about this. I love you all from the bottom of my heart and do well to take care of yourself. Do well to check on your loved ones. Love you all.